Hey everyone, this is Zach with Laza Mods Custom Gaming Controllers, and today I'm going to show you how to take apart the new PlayStation 5 DualSense controller. So let's jump right into this and take this thing apart. I'm going to be giving you my first impressions of this as well. We've got one out of the box, and we're going to open a brand new one for you guys on camera. So that you can get your first impression and learn how to take this controller apart. They now come in a cardboard box instead of the plastic clamshell, which is new, and also in their own anti-static shielding. It's very good thing I think let's get these boxes out of the way all right so this is the controller this is what it looks like and I'm going to show you how to take it apart first of all first impressions of these uh, new DualSense controllers they are heavy they are heavy as compared to one of the PlayStation 4 controllers um, significant difference and I will show you when I take this apart thinking it's because of the triggers uh, but the first thing to do is take off this fascia, um, like the little insert, I guess, right here, the trim piece down in the bottom. And for that, um, you can use a couple different tools. Uh, you just need to be careful. I've got a flathead screwdriver here, and I also have a couple of uh, pry tools here. So it's just whichever you are more comfortable with and that you have access to. And what you'll need to do is just very, very carefully just slide your screwdriver up under the half of the trim piece here on the bottom on each side and then it's just clips retention clips that you can just pop right out on each side and it will come off the controllers also be careful of these two pieces right here you don't want to break them they do go up under the touchpad here all right now that you've got that piece off set it aside this is the uh, this is the tricky part. You can see that we've got screws here. We've got a uh, two Phillips double zero size, as you can see right there on that screwdriver, just like on the PlayStation 4 controller. Same with this. So you'll want to take those off and put it in your magnetic tray, so that way you don't lose any of the screws. Next, um, just like on the PlayStation 4 controller, you'll have a couple more screws up top. This did take me a minute to figure it out, but again, uh, if you will just get a flathead screwdriver or any pry tool, if you have a plastic pry tool, that'll work as well. Be careful here, this did take a minute, and Sony is pretty smart about how they did this. They wanted to hide and be secretive on how to uh, get into these controllers this year so you want to take the bumpers off which is new also put those off to the side you don't want to lose those and when you pop the bumper the L1 and the R1 button you will see two more screws up here in the corner so you'll want to take those out as well And now you'll be able to get the controller halves apart without breaking any of the pieces, the bumpers, or anything like that. Now it's just as simple as opening the two halves like we've done in, in the past. You'll just want to generally, very lightly, just pry it open just like before. Sometimes they do take a little persuasion let's try it on this side as well you'll just want to work evenly across the controller to make sure that you don't damage anything and also it does help again get that flathead screwdriver there's a couple retention clips right here just try to help it along its way and then you should be able to get over here on the side and just sort of put your fingers in there and pry it open there's another retention clip right there that you'll want to get and then there's one more on this side and there he goes 
Now, just as simple as lifting the back half of the shell off. We'll want to set that to the side as well. Keep that with our trim piece. And now you can see that we have got inside of the controller. This is the battery. A little bit bigger battery than we had before in the PlayStation 4. So this DualSense 5 controller should be able to last and you might be able to get a few more hours of gaming out of it. But we're going to go ahead and take that out. Just a pair of uh, needle nose pliers. You can just sort of hold the battery there. And just very gently wiggle the connector out. Now that you got the battery out, you'll also want to set that aside. Of course, again, just like in the previous generation, there is another screw hidden beneath the battery. You'll also want to take that out. Then the battery holding tray can be removed after you take the ribbon cable out for the back microphone. So there is a microphone on the back now. You want to make sure that you don't lose that and that will pop out really easily on you. So just make sure that you leave that, leave that flat. And now you can see all the ribbon connectors. We've just disconnected one right here. And then there's another ribbon connector for the front microphone. Um, another ribbon cable for the adaptive triggers on each side. And then one more ribbon cable for the touchpad. You'll want to go ahead and disconnect all of those. You can do that either with a pair of needle nose pliers or a pair of tweezers. I find that it's a little bit easier to grab a hold of it with the pliers. So just get that and wiggle it out very easily. Everything is very easy um, on these controllers. You don't want to force anything. You don't want to pry anything. It's just very easily. The ribbon cables for the adaptive triggers, you can just wiggle out by hand. There's a big tab. You want to pull on the tab. You don't want to pull on the actual cable, as you can see right there. Don't pull on the thin cable that will break. Pull on the tab. Just wiggle that out as well. And then there's also a tab right here for the back, for the front microphone, excuse me. And you'll also want to remove that. And what I've found is it's good practice if you'll just get some uh, masking tape. We have plenty of that lying around. Get some masking tape. And for this particular, let's actually rip that in half again here. For the front microphone ribbon cable, it does want to get trapped underneath the controller when you put it back together. So just tape it up to the front part of the shell. All right. So now that you've got all of the ribbon cables disconnected, there's a couple more screws that you'll need to take out. There's a screw right here, and then there's a screw right here that's holding the chassis in place. You'll want to take those out. Put the screws somewhere where you won't lose them. Now we can get access to, if I can find my tweezers here, you'll want to, there's a tab right here, I'll try to get that in focus for you, there's a tab right beside the battery connector, you'll want to press that, and then you can sort of press on the thumbstick on the other side, the left thumbstick, as you press the tab, and that will pop the main motherboard up, so again right here, you'll want to just push that tab over, lift up, and now you have got motherboard loose looks very similar to the PlayStation of course we got the ribbon connector that for the uh, buttons and the directional pad so let's uh, let's get the chassis out of here just starting to loosen everything up there's a couple more screws that you've got to get right here for the touchpad that would be holding down the chassis as well. These are silver and they're also a little bit longer. They're the same size. They're still a Phillips 00 screw, but they are a little bit longer. As you can see, those are significantly longer than the black screws. Don't mix those up. Set those over to the side. And now, make sure that you push the ribbon cable through the slot. You don't want to pull.
pull it out. And now, be very careful of the rumble motors that are attached here. You don't want to have to solder those back on. There is the frame. Looks very similar to the PlayStation 4 controller. Very, very similar with the uh, ribbon as the um, touch input selection. So, we want to set that off to the side. We are almost there. For the touchpad here, there's a couple more screws. Sony put a lot of screws in this controller. We'll count them all up after we get it disassembled here. But there are a ton of screws. They spared no expense on the screws on this controller. There's a bunch in it this time. Two more screws. We want to put those also in the tray. I guess that one stuck to me. And then... touchpad separates in half be careful not to hit the ribbon cable you want to set that off to the side there's your touchpad set that off to the side and then just like the PlayStation 4 PlayStation 3 before it you have a couple membranes here directional pad you'll have the X button the square button circle button and triangle. You also have the share button and the options button. Might have said those backwards. But there you go. One more button here in the middle, which is the PlayStation power button. We'll take that touchpad off. And that is how you disassemble a PlayStation 5 DualSense controller. We'll have a video on how to reassemble it, so make sure to check that out on our channel. If you've not already, please hit the subscribe button and the notification. We're going to have a lot of cool videos coming out here in the future. We're even going to show you how to paint these controllers. So we're going to have a lot of product launches, a lot of new PlayStation 5 designs coming out soon. We appreciate you watching this video. Share it with somebody that might be uh, wanting to know how to take apart these controllers. Hopefully we help somebody out. And Team Laza, hope to be hearing from you soon.